We are now going to hear from our first panel of the day, which will focus on definitions, developments and differences across Europe. Our moderator for this is Louise Dixon, Strategic Partner Lead for Google. And don't forget, you can submit your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We'll review the questions and put a selection of them to the panel at the end of this session. Over to you, Louise. Thank you very much, David. Um, and welcome, everybody. My name is Louise Dixon. I'm the Strategic Partner Lead on the Broadcast and Entertainment Team at Google in the UK. And I'm delighted to be your moderator for the first of today's panels, which is on CTV definitions, developments and differences. Pardon me, my video is about to start. Hello, here I am. Uh, CTV definitions, developments and differences across EMEA. Um, my panel lineup today is wonderful. So I'm very excited to be bringing you a discussion from Julie Selman, MD of the UK and Nordics at Magnite, Hitash Bass, Director of Publisher Development for CTV in EMEA at Pubmatic, Diana Romero from Publicis, and Jana Gukalp, VP of International New Business and Partnerships Development at Media Math. So with that, welcome all of my panelists. Lovely to see you all. And um, I want to, before we get to the panel, I want to do a quick reminder that David would have mentioned earlier. And that is, we are taking some Q and A's today. So if you're an audience member, please do feel free to enter any of your questions for your panelists, indicating which panelist your question is for. And time permitting, we'll get to a couple of those at the end. Mm. So let us start off with definitions. And I feel that the advanced TV market is often extremely confusing with a plethora of definitions out there. Um, but I have no doubt that Hitesh is going to be able to help us shed some light on this and provide a little bit of clarity on some of these definitions. So Hitesh, I'd like to start with you and if you could tell us what the difference you believe is between OTT and CTV. Okay, thank you, Louise. Thank you for your confidence as well. Firstly, I don't think advanced TV needs to be as confusing as it appears to be. It's ads running against TV content. It's targeted with as much precision as is the current data and tech allows. Now, just at the moment, there's a lot of data and a lot of tech. So I guess that's where the confusion can, can arise. There's certainly definition confusion around OTT and CTV. So let me give you my take on these. OTT or over the top TV is TV content delivered over the internet. It goes over the top of traditional cable, satellite and antenna distribution, and it's viewed on desktop devices, mobile devices, or TV sets. CTV is a subset of OTT. So it's basically where this content is viewed on a TV connected to the internet. That's either directly as a smart TV or via a device like a Fire TV stick or a gaming console. Mm -hmm. um, and are you seeing different, uh, different definitions being used across Europe at all? We're seeing confusion about the definitions, certainly. So in, in some markets, um, it's considered to be only related to on-demand uh, video. In others, CTV is related to just smart TVs. Then, then there are other terms like IPTV and HBB TV, which add to the confusion. And just to help, IPTV is TV connected, uh, so distributed uh, over the internet, but accessed via set-top box. And that's very prevalent in France, where the telcos are the platforms for a lot of TV content. And then HBB TV is basically a method by which TV sets themselves can deliver household uh, targeting and things like overlays on top of linear TV ads. To summarize for me, I think it's important not to lose sight of why brands work with TV in the first place. It's about the kind of halo effect of being around premium content, around delivering mass reach. And that's still possible. It's just that with the new viewing habits, you have to do it in slightly different ways and combining traditional TV with more advanced methods. But that's it. I, I think getting bogged down in definitions is not the best way forward. Mm -hmm. um, Julie, I'd like to pass to you on this. And on the area of looking at linear versus CTV, do you think there's a need to be treating CTV differently to linear at all? Hi, hi, Louise. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so I agree, obviously, with Hitesh on the definitions and they're quite confusing. But I think one of the things we really need to look at when we're talking about CTV is not just the definition, but the difference also in the consumer experience versus, for example, online video, because the great thing about CTV is really that 
that lean back experience. You're watching a TV as if you're watching a linear TV. For a consumer, there's no difference really if you're watching it on the big screen. We recently did a research at Magnite looking at consumer behavior across Europe around C2E viewing. And we really found that when people are actively viewing on their big screen, they also act differently in terms of how they see their ads and how they interact with the content. So I think this is really important that what we're trying to educate our buyers and sellers as well, the sort of com- the confusion is not just about the definitions, but it's also the experience. And that's really mm-hmm. important, I think, as an advertiser, especially if that's what the type of uh, audience you're trying to reach. Yeah. I want to come back and talk about that research in a moment. Coming back to this confusion, this point on confusion on acronyms, Diana, if I may pass to you, do you feel that the the many acronyms that are out there are in some cases overcomplicating the buy from a buyer's perspective? Thank you, Louise. There there is certainly a lot of confusion as the the space grows around the definitions and defining OTT and CTV. We do... Although we do see those kind of like issues with definitions and definitions of size, I think we're trying to move as an industry and from an agency perspective, we're now talking about accessing content through the internet feed as an overall. We always associate a VOD or an escort to these buys. And we have seen, for example, that even in the US where the market is way more advanced, we do see some sort of fragmentations as well because it depends on the region and it is still very highly together with broadcast. And we definitely think addressing those differences and the lack of the commonality in terms of definition and measurement could potentially slow the adoption even more. Although I think the overall trend will continue to grow, the, the momentum is there and we do see that the trend will increase for 2021 and 2022 as well. Yeah. Interesting. And then just as a final point on this part around definitions, Jana, if I can pass to you, I think, what is your view on the fact that is TV content and the audience reach really the most important thing rather than the technical means of delivery here? I think content and audience are king. And the question really brings us back to why are your planners trying to find it digitally in the first place versus just sticking with, in, with linear really, right? And to just summarize that for the audience, it's because it allows you to eliminate wasted impressions by overlaying it with audience data. You can target actively engaged users who have like actually switched on the connected device rather than just leaving the TV on for your pet to watch it, for example. You can frequency cap campaigns, you can reach cord cutters and apply targeting capabilities that aren't available on linear, right? But for CTV, you just can't get access to content without thinking about like the technical means of how you're gonna deliver it. And especially in Europe, it's so fragmented. We've heard this word like a lot already, right? But it's so true. It's very much controlled by individual publishers and publishing houses, CTV content, and versus, for example, streamlined exchange access or more so of that in the US and all of those fragmented access points have their own needs for like technical and legal requirements of how to interact that content. So if, if you want that, and we've just heard about the benefits, you know, of having CTV content versus linear, you have to think about, you have to think about technical access mm-hmm. and all of those ad tech providers on this call today uh, and many more out there are, are here to help with that. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Thank you. I think this leads us quite long, quite nicely onto the developments that we are seeing across Europe now. And Diana, I want to come back to you on this one because you did touch on the fact that the US is quite a streets ahead in terms of the CTV markets in Europe. So what I'd like to hear from you is over the last six to 12 months, because we've had a year like no other, what type of evolution have you seen on CTV in Europe? Yes, for sure. I think we, when we look at uh, Europe uh, versus the US in terms of the CTV um, space, although again, I think uh, I've mentioned it earlier, but even though the US market is very advanced, it is still, it has firm intention because it has to split by regional publishers uh, capabilities. So there's still some work to be done But I think the main drive, we see this trend globally as well, is that in the past year or so, we have seen several acquisitions that have led to some consolidations in the marketplace. There is like large network umbrellas, and this is a bit more relevant to the US. But I think we will see that trend as well. As soon as we address that fragmentation, move uh, here to, to to, to Europe as well. I think there is a lot of potential and a lot of opportunities for each of the major able to 
gaps in the in the space to continue to grow and, and address like the technical limitations as well as the measurement limitations. So I think we have seen like these big acquisitions happening and hopefully that will translate into some tangible solutions as well in the marketplace here in, in Europe. I think here in Europe as well, unfortunately, as I mentioned, I think because the U the mark the Europe market is so fragmented, there is a, a still an issues around scale, inventory, and distribution of that inventory. So we're definitely would like to continue to see how the different markets are going to address this. We do have seen also a few developments. I think even though scale is an issue, we do see CTV, the usage grow because more people were investing in smart TVs or ways to convert their TVs into connecting to TV. So that's part of the reason. And obviously on the back of the lockdown, which able publishers saw the benefit of. So I think we will continue to see that. Addressability as well, although for most of the part of like on the back of of the lack of device IDs and the data path stacks across CTV device, there has been a lot of limitation around target cap capabilities. But over the last 12 months, there has been more developments from a publicist perspective. We're actually been looking at ID-based options using our relationships with Be Epsilon and their core ID to offer more addressability across CTV uh, buys and definitely accessibility as well. More publishers have created programmatic access points for buyers. Two years ago, actually, the majority of the, these buys will have done as a direct buys. But most publishers have developed connections with various SSPs and DSPs. So those access points uh, will help down the road to increase that addressability and control options for buyers and campaigns as well. Thank you for that, Diana. And Hitesh, I know Pubmatic has um, produced some research over the last year on some developments and trends that you would have been seeing. Um, could you give us a bit of a quick overview on what came out of that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we published a study in January of this year called The Future of CTV Europe. And it was basically in-depth interviews with kind of both the buy side and the sell side. So we got a really good kind of overall view quickly. In terms of some of the major trends we saw, there's three really. One was, I guess, the obvious one was that everybody's taking CTV seriously. I mean, it's obviously where eyeballs are moving and everybody, whether it's tech businesses, broadcasters, recognize that there's a big opportunity here. The other trend was around programmatic and really the fact that it's being built into this from the very beginning. Most people recognize that this is the way in which you can unlock data in this space. At the moment, it's programmatic guaranteed largely just because demand exceeds quality supply. But as that changes, there's a, there's definitely a view that there'll be more biddable and technologies like header bidding will become very important where it allows publishers to maximize yields and fill rates. There's more transparency and it allows buyers to access more inventory. And the, the large, last big trend was around collaboration. So especially the local players are, are terrified of the large tech companies that are coming into this space and they recognize that they need, they need to work together. You know, whereas they, in the past, they competed really fiercely. Now they're looking to create other formal collaborations or more informal ways of working together, which is quite remarkable when you look at the history, but it really de demonstrates how nervous they are about the, the future and the other platforms coming in. In terms of differences, very quickly, there's a two-speed Europe we found, and there's the large global players who've got a unified content, unified tech, and they can move quite quickly. And then the local players are trying to balance their very large legacy TV businesses, which is still a lot of money, with how to invest in the future. So it's a bit of a balancing act for them. So there's quite a difference there. Within the different markets, again, different paces. UK, Germany and France are probably more developed. If you look at Italy and Spain, slightly less developed, a bit more immature there. And the factors there are things like infrastructure. Unified broadband connectivity is, is much more difficult in Italy and Spain at the moment. Another factor in those markets is that because of the pandemic, TV costs or linear TV costs are at historic lows. So buyers are really looking at TV to just get low cost reach while they can and perhaps not putting as much focus on CTV. So it's, it's important, but it's not urgent for them. And then the la I guess the last big difference is, is really around HBB TV, which is really strong in Germany, will grow in Italy and likely in France as well. Um, and this is really things like adding overlays to linear TV ads to household addressable using television sets. Both of these are linked to linear TV rather than CTV. So this may well hamper the development of CTV in those markets. And, those are the big kind of points that we've seen in terms of differences and trends from markets. And Julie, one of the trends that Hitesh mentioned there was about the eyeballs going to, to CTVs. And I want to come back to that consumer research that you mentioned earlier. Can you tell us a bit more about what you saw in your own consumer research? Yeah, sure. So we did a research across around 10,000 respondents in Europe. And we really saw that, first of all, 
CGV viewing is really now on, on par with linear viewing. So that's really an amazing takeaway, I think, uh, especially if you're an, an advertiser or a brand and seeing, look at CTV as something to add on to your campaign. It really should be part of your campaign, especially if you're going for reach. Another thing, like I mentioned before, in terms of behavior, consumers really prefer streaming. So 76% of the consumers also said that they plan to increase or maintain uh, their same sort of viewing levels and habits after the pandemic is over. And this means that they're actively viewing rather than passively viewing. So they would see linear viewing as something more passive where you're, you're making your breakfast and you have the news on in the background. Whereas when it comes to the more active viewing, when you're choosing what you're going to watch, when you want to watch it, and therefore they're also more inclined to take actions based on advertising and things like that. So that's really mm -hmm. encouraging as well. And then, yeah, lastly, I think just going on the pandemic and what's going to happen, because this was obviously about behavior during the pandemic. What really became clear as well that even though I think habits of people will change, obviously, while we're coming out of this pandemic and we're going to go back to the office and not be at home all day, hopefully anymore, and we'll be going out to restaurants again and things like that. But people have said they're very clear they will stay in the sort of the, the streaming and the CTV uh, environment. And like we said, I heard before from Daniel as well, TVs are becoming more and more smart TVs now. So this is something we're going to keep seeing and it's going to keep growing. Thank you. Um, Jana, I want to pass back to you now just to come back to the buyer perspective on this and around buyer adoption across EMEA. I'm keen to understand if you're seeing different levels of buyer adoption across Europe. Yeah, we, we very much see the budget follow the consumer trends there, I have to say. So it's very clear that the UK is the furthest ahead and we see the biggest CTV budgets uh, reaching us at least in that market. The rest of Europe, as we've heard also in terms of user adoption, is behind, it lags behind in, in stages of adoption by consumers and the investment of the buyers follows that. And it's also not just the buyers who are lagging behind in regards to supporting CTV with their dollars. It's also tech vendors and any sort of supporting ad tech like measurements and, and brands, safety and things like that, who are also a little bit behind in, in these other markets on supporting the features that are needed for buyers to feel confident investing into, into this medium. So it's something that everybody needs to work on that and the industry needs to come together to support all of these necessary things that mm -hmm. we see as table stakes for digital video, for programmatic video, for example, that are just not quite there yet in CTV uh, in all of the markets and uh, even less so outside of the UK and Europe for the dollars to really flow very freely into CTV. And, and just digging a bit deeper on those buying strategies as well, do you see a difference in the CTV approach from a buying strategy versus video or linear TV? Yeah, absolutely. Like, for example, on CTV, we see a lot of private marketplace deals, programmatic guaranteed deal types happening. Whereas on, for example, just digital video, it's a lot more open market buying that we see happening there. And the audience reached via CTV is often considered incremental and the budgets that are given are incremental to your uh, general branding campaign, let's just say. Whereas with digital video, programmatic video, that's like a format. It's just one of the many formats in addition to display um, that are being used in your general performance or branding campaign. That is something that we see for sure. What else do advertisers care about? Maybe you may ask, right? Like in addition to access, in addition to supply, they certainly care about being able to track the users you're actually reaching. They care about identity. That's something that keeps popping up, at least with us, as a huge topic. Like how are you able to identify users given also we're moving into this populist world across CTV? But you know what they also really care about? It's pricing. And we've seen advertisers really value that you can actually apply CPM pricing to, to show an ad on the big screen and streamlining that pricing um, strategy really with your general digital programmatic pricing is something that we've seen advertisers really value and that's helped them want to shift and invest in a very easy, convenient way into CTV, into the big screen. Diana, can I ask, does any of that resonate with you? Do you see the same um, kind of goals in terms of pricing as well? Um, yes, when we look at buying strategies, we don't really see 
they don't really vary uh, by platform. They really vary by audience. And, and at Publicis, we do have an, an audience first approach. So we plan according to, to, their, to, to that audience view and habits. For example, here in the UK, the majority of the TV scale is still through broadcast and, and YouTube. And these buys would not necessarily be both differently. You will be looking at um, your target audience and planning on will you maximize uh, your reach for sure. We see the majority of campaigns are bought uh, through TV teams, so budgets will be worked on where they can reach the audience and budgets are split because of that. Some audiences would have a larger video or CTV split uh, versus linear TV. But I think we, what we've seen as well is that in uh, 2021 and 2022, we will see uh, the CTV video buys increasing, of course, as consumption of audiences change. And, and I guess more content is being produced by a vote and as as vote uh, suppliers, so there will be a unique opportunity or unique opportunities to watch more CTV, as we have seen with the rise of Disney and Netflix. So our approach will stay the same throughout: be the audience first and plan accordingly to where um, they are consuming their content. I think obviously uh, from a, an agency perspective, audience teams vary by region uh, for CTV. But for most part of, of the TV teams will still do the majority of the planning and programmatic teams will do the buys as well if, if they're accessible programmatically. Mm -hmm. So do you see almost like this kind of education needed on both sides of the fence there? With both of those Absolutely. Teams? Yes, yes, definitely. I think it's two, twofold and we definitely need to continue to educate the markets on this. Obviously, the UK um, is the most advanced here in Europe, but I think that's something that needs to continue to happen ac across the EMEA. Okay, so you've given us kind of one of the, something that will be on your wish list in terms of like more education. And I think this is where I'd like to finish our conversation today, which is to ask each of you, what do you feel is the one thing that should be prioritised across EMEA to really accelerate CTV trading over the next six to 12 months? Hitesh, let me pass to you first. Okay, thank you. For me, without a doubt, it's about measurement. It's about getting the industry to develop standards for measurement. At the moment, we need to agree on things like how to measure, what to measure, and looking at how kind of CTV can combine with linear TV to deliver effective reach and frequency. Right now, there's data sitting in lots of silos. So there's broadcasters, people like Sky, Samsung have a data set, Samba TV have a data set. I think these need to be shared and just need to work together to get a consistent view across all the platforms and across all the channels. And that's going to require some collaboration, which, you know, which might be tough, but it's vital. So we need to provide advertisers with the confidence to put more money into this sector. That's what we're, what we're going to need to do. Judy, what about you? Where should the priority be? Uh, yeah, I agree. I think programmatic really needs to catch up to CTV or the other way around. We really see so much efficiencies now in digital advertising trading, and we don't see it yet in CTV. The opportunity is huge. Addressable, digital-like inventory on a big screen is like the holy grail, I think, for any um, marketer. Yeah, less fragmentation in terms of the publishers, the inventory available, uh, the technology vendors, uh, the measurement partners, and needs to be more unified, become more yeah, efficient and effective. And Diana? I think I'll have to agree <laughs> as well. I think uh, definitely addressability, like the lack of targeting or consistent audiences available for CTB buys means that brands will still have to run on contextual but or rely on contextual bias and creating that addressability will help not only to increase media outcomes but allow us to really help the brands with business outcomes and tie that together as well as make the buys much more uh, efficient for the spend against it as well so here at Publicis we're pushing our core ID epsilon and capabilities as I mentioned earlier but there is still definitely work needed from all sides of the CTV ecosystem to really help build that 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 partnership really. And Jana, I could see you nodding furiously through that as well. So I'm taking, uh, you agree with that, but I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on what you feel should be prioritised. Yeah, yes, you're very right. I can only second and third everybody's opinion on sort of the tech vendors having to come together as well as publishers to unify, make it simpler, which goes along also with education, right? Like it's so hard to educate buyers, sellers, everybody involved in this on this topic because it is so nuanced and so fragmented really between the different countries in Europe, but also between like how different publishers are handling it technically, legally, how they define ads, etc. But I really want to just pick up on, on what Diana said on contextualizing 
and being able to, to deliver a CTV ads in a brand safe way. There are already solutions out there for how to contextualize uh, content, but that needs to be also unified, I think, because it's so key to, to be able to give um, advertisers that peace of mind that they're actually running in a brand safe environment. Amazing. Thank you ever so much uh, to our panelists. I am quite conscious that we have gone over our lot of time. So with that, I am not going to pass for uh, some Q&A, but I'm going to hand back to David and thank all of my panelists for a fascinating discussion today. Thank you and David, back to you. Thank you very much, Louise and panelists. I really enjoyed that session.